Hello, everyone. Happy almost Thanksgiving and welcome back to the NetSuite podcast. I'm your host, Kendall Fisher, and in light of the giving season, this episode brings forth an amazing organization NetSuite has the honor of working with, Creativity Explored. It's a nonprofit based out of San Francisco that gives people with developmental disabilities a place to learn, create, and share art with the community. I sat down with Megan Hover, Creativity Explored's Development Director, to discuss how the organization is fulfilling such an awesome mission, the challenges that come with doing so, and how NetSuite has helped them overcome such challenges. With a history working in the nonprofit sector, Megan also provides some solid insight for nonprofit organizations and leaders and leaves us with some future goals as Creativity Explored continues to make a huge impact for artists. All of that coming up next. You're listening to the NetSuite podcast, where we discuss what's happening within NetSuite, why we're doing it, and where we're heading in the future. We'll dive into the details about the software and the people at NetSuite who are behind all the moving parts. We'll also feature customer growth stories, discussing the ups and downs of running a company and how one integrated system can help your business continue to scale. Before we get into this NetSuite podcast episode with Creativity Explored, we want to thank our sponsors over at The Second City. Want to challenge your company to innovate and elevate through laughter? Second City Works is the B2B side of the world-famous comedy mecca, The Second City. They've helped hundreds of Fortune 1000 companies inspire better performance by using their award-winning improvisation and audience-driven techniques that are powered by, you guessed it, humor. Interested in live events, hands-on workshops, campaign consultation, branded content, and a whole lot more? Yeah, they thought so. Visit secondcityworks.com to learn more. Hi, Megan. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. We're so happy to have you. I mean, so for everybody that's tuning in right now, we are currently at Sweet Connect in San Francisco with Megan, which is actually where Creativity Explored, which is the organization that Megan works for, it's where it's located. So I'm actually just going to start with having you tell our listeners, what is Creativity Explored? Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Creativity Explored is a nonprofit arts organization in San Francisco. We work with over 130 artists with developmental disabilities, providing them with space, supplies, professional instruction, and exhibition opportunities to promote and sell their work, of which the artist receives 50% of each art sale. My goodness, just such a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant concept, brilliant organization. Who founded Creativity Explored and when? Yeah, so Creativity Explored has been around since 1983. We were founded by a Bay Area couple, Elias Katz and Florence Ludens Katz, and they founded our organization back in the 1980s, right after starting a our sister organization, Creative Growth in Oakland. Mm. And this all really started, this entire movement started because a bunch of spaces and institutions were closing down as a result of budget cuts in the state of California. And so Elias Katz, who is a psychologist, really wanted to create a space for people with disabilities. And his wife, Florence, is an artist. So she had this idea and they started it in their garage and now it's grown into a worldwide movement. Wow, wow, so incredible. And and it truly has and just by seeing all the artwork, it's it's it honestly has blown me away. I I love it. Yes. Um what is the the mission of Creativity Explored? So Creativity Explored gives artists with dev- developmental disabilities the means to create and share their work with the community, celebrating the power of art to change lives. Mm, okay, so how do you fuel 
this mission, if you will? Like, what are you guys doing day to day to do this? Yeah. So we have a whole suite of programming that we provide to our artists. We are completely and totally artist centered in our approach. So every single year we have annual artist meetings where we meet with individual artists to ask them about mediums or materials that they would like to work with in our studio. And then we also offer them other programming that they can participate in. So our standard program that we have is our studio program where artists come into our studio to create art. We also have our exhibition programming, which provides opportunities for them to exhibit their work both in our gallery on site, as well as with our partner galleries and museums that we partner with throughout the world. Um, we also have two really exciting programs that we recently launched. One is our Imaginate Saturdays public workshops where members of the community can come into our studio every single Saturday from one to four to create art alongside artists with disabilities. And then our other program that we just launched this year is our paid internship program. So our artists are actually joining our staff as paid interns to work alongside our staff in our marketing teams or our program team. So one of our interns is actually teaching some of the art making public workshops on Saturdays. Wow. Wow. This is like so much, so incredible. Um, you guys are, you know, you're, you're, this is just truly transformational is really the only word I can think of. Absolutely. What do you think the world was lacking and continues to lack, to be completely honest, um, outside of the San Francisco Bay area that creativity explored is fulfilling? So in addition to a whole lot of color, because <laughs> everything we have is very colorful, yeah, we definitely see community and family within our studios every single day. So a sense of belonging, a sense of community every single day when I walk in the studio, I am told hello by every single one of the artists, sometimes multiple times by the same artists. And whenever I'm gone for the day, either on vacation or sick, the next day immediately everybody's asking me if I'm okay, how my vacation went, and there's just a very genuine interest in me and where I've been and how I'm doing. And that just really makes me feel as though I'm part of this community and part of this family. I want to talk to about community, but but first I kind of want to address the question of why is this creative outlet and this community building so important for your artists that that creativity explored serves yeah so i i truly do believe that art in general is a great creative outlet to express yourself and tell your story or your unique experience in the world and especially with a marginalized community like people with disabilities who are often ignored or often forgotten having a way to share their story share their unique experience share their likes and their dislikes with the world it's usually not happening and so to have a space dedicated to our artists to do that is really truly spectacular and I think really elevates them both on their own personal level and professional esteem and also it provides them with an opportunity to show the world what they're capable of. And I, I want to go so I'm going back to the community thing I want to flip this you know, obviously this is doing great for your artists, but also it kind of provides, uh, well, it definitely provides a new perspective from the people that, you know, without disabilities, the people that are viewing the art, that are buying this art. Can you speak to that just a little bit? Like yeah. from, from a community perspective outside of just people with disabilities, how's it serving really everyone? Yeah. So I think it's, Creativity Explored provides that platform for people to view artwork created by our artists, but it also provides an opportunity for our artists to be included in private collections around mm -hmm. the world. So mm -hmm. seeing our artists work on somebody's wall in their living room or their kitchen is really great and heartwarming to always learn about and hear about. And then in addition to that, you know, we work constantly through our volunteer program 
then also just through our exhibitions, we work with local, national, and international artists. So they're coming to our studio, speaking to our artists, viewing their work, and then oftentimes they're inspired by it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I hear stories all the time of people saying, look at this piece that I recently created, Megan. Here is the artist from Creativity Explored that inspired my work recently. So I think it also provides them with inspiration. And then for those who maybe have never created art, our public workshops are a way for them to learn from somebody with a disability, which you don't hear about really in the world. So Mm. to have platforms where people can come in and somebody with a disability is teaching them a new skill, I think is very spectacular and even revolutionary. It's empowering. It's truly empowering. What about from a financial standpoint? How are you helping your artists financially become self-sufficient? Yeah, so all of our artists receive 50% of each art sale. Wow. And that's every single sale that we do in the gallery, outside the gallery, even during our annual event that we have. We have a gala every single year where we host an auction. And last year, or early this year, I should say, at our event, one of our pieces went for $23,000. So, Holy cow. So that artist alone was able to make $11,500 just off of the sale of one piece. So wow. this money is really transformative for them. Yeah. You know, it provides them with the choice, with professional esteem, with even independence, stuff that I think sometimes people without disabilities kind of take for granted. Yeah, it's so true. Um, how is Creativity Explored able to do all of this? I mean, how are you guys remaining sustainable and being funded and getting more donors? I know that's kind of your role, as, as I told our, our audience in the intro to this podcast, but can you speak to that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. So we are very lucky to have a strong partnership with the Golden Gate Regional Center, which um, is a pseudo governmental organization with the state of California. And they they provide about 50 percent of our funding and they've been a partner of ours for over 30 years. So we're really lucky to have them on our side and for them to believe in our programs and to believe in our artists. And then the rest of the money, about 40 percent, we do have to raise through grant writing, through individual donations and then also our event that we host annually. Um, And then the other 10% usually comes from art sales or art product sales. So we talk about this on the podcast. We've talked about it with several nonprofit leaders. Um, But, you know, in order to remain sustainable, nonprofits really need to have visibility into all financials, donations, donors, and so on and so forth. How does Creativity Explored do this? Yes. So we use NetSuite, (laughs) of course. This is why we're on the NetSuite (laughs) podcast. So we use NetSuite to track all of our different revenue sources. When you work at a nonprofit that has sales as part of your revenue generating system, you need something that can kind of track everything. Mm -hmm. So all of our government funding is tracked in NetSuite. All of our donations are tracked in NetSuite. All of our sales are tracked in NetSuite. And what's great about this is you can kind of see how funders, how far their reach really goes. So I can look at a funder and say, this person gives annually on a donation level, but then also purchases artwork from these three artists. And then in addition to that, they might even work with their company to get funding from their company. And it's really great to see that all within one system. Yeah, truly. Um, I'm going to take it back just a bit, though. Um, When did the organization implement NetSuite? So we implemented NetSuite in 2012, so about seven years ago. And why? What systems was the organization running on previous to this? So systems is the key word. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely not one system, but multiple. Okay. We had different systems kind of set up for each department. So we use QuickBooks for our accounting. We use Salesforce for our donor management. We also had, um, you know, Excel spreadsheets upon Excel spreadsheets. 
Con Excel spreadsheets. Um, so we were using multiple systems and then all of those systems kind of had a point person that was really managing them. And that's what really made it difficult was yeah. having one person who was in there every single time instead of multiple people who could look at the data in real time. Right, right. Um, aside from just not having, you know, that single source of truth, if you will, what other challenges? I mean, how did this prevent, I don't know, you guys gaining more, you know, donors, donors or getting more fundraising or was there any other challenges that came with it? So oftentimes when we share the word about our exhibition openings, that comes from multiple sources uh-huh. and that's what can prove challenging. So uh-huh. if you have an Excel spreadsheet with all of your volunteers listed or all of your exhibition partners listed and then another you know, system for your donors and then a whole another system for your customers, that can make it kind of challenging to have one clear mailing system or mail document that you can then send to a print house or a mail house to get everything sent out to everybody because uh-huh. of course we want the world to know about that so we want them to come to our openings and to purchase more artwork made by our artists want to help save the planet here's an idea go nude Unfortunately, not wearing clothes isn't realistic for most of us, but buying sustainable clothing is. Here's Gordon Seabury, CEO of Toad Co. If you know the garment production can generate tremendous pollution, so that's why we're hellbent on offering cleaner, sustainably made clothing that's stylish and long-lasting. But that's only half the battle at Toad Co. When it comes to hitting our business goals, we've learned to focus on what we're good at and seek partners for other areas of expertise. So when it came to ensuring a consistent customer experience across all sales channels and knowing what was going on with all aspects of our business, we chose NetSuite by Oracle. They know business systems. We know eco-friendly clothes. A perfect match. From accounting and finance to commerce and human resources, NetSuite is the number one business system to help you simply manage your business. Right now, go to netsuite.com slash toad to get your free guide, Crushing the Five Barriers to Growth. That's netsuite.com slash toad for your free guide. And to hear Gordon bear all on Toad & Co.'s Growth Story. You know, with such an impactful and transformative organization, the process of finding the right solution had to have taken some serious thought. Um, why do you think Creativity Explored ultimately chose NetSuite to, to partner with them on their you know, financial and ERP side of things? So we ultimately chose NetSuite because of the multi-use function that it creates for us. So having a system where I am able to track donations and see how many people have given within the past year or how am I going along with my annual goals is really great to see all within one system. Before, it was a matter of reaching out to our operations manager who handles our bookkeeping and asking, you know, how is, you know, my individual donations coming along for the year versus how is, you know, my individual donations coming along now in NetSuite, I can just look it up very easily. And then in addition to that, I think our, you know, my other colleague who I think really was pushing the NetSuite migration, (laughs) she was thrilled to learn that our POS system that we use in the gallery can actually can actually communicate with NetSuite in real time. So wow. any sale that is made, seconds later, it pops up in yeah. NetSuite. Well, and that's so important. I mean, again, I reiterate, as any nonprofit leader knows, you need to know exactly every cent that's coming in and going out. Absolutely. Um, what did NetSuite offer you as a sweet donation grantee? So we were really lucky enough to when we first migrated over to NetSuite to get a donation of almost $20,000 discounted off of our of implementing NetSuite into our systems, which is really, really impactful. In 2012, you know, our annual budget was a little less than $2 million. So $20,000 is almost the entire art supplies line item for the entire year. So that would have to be resources that we we apply towards getting a new database rather than buying quality professional art supplies for our artists to create in our studio. Huge, huge. Um, 
how does Creativity Explored utilize NetSuite? Um, and how has that kind of transformed over time? Um, what aspects of the organization run on NetSuite today? So each department works within NetSuite. Our entire management team looks at NetSuite on either a daily basis or we have a management team meeting every single month where we look at it together. So we are keeping track of artists and artist attendance and artist emergency contact info all within NetSuite. We also use it as our donor database or our CRM to track donations and all of the donors that are very generous to us. Uh -huh. We also track sales within NetSuite. So our gallery and exhibition staff puts um, puts all of the sales in there. So, and that communicates with our donors as well. So being able to see donors who also purchase art is great for my job. And then of course, our finance team works within it for bookkeeping and accounting purposes. So let's go back to some of these challenges, these challenges you had mentioned earlier. Um, how has NetSuite helped you guys overcome those challenges, like especially from the single, you know, source of truth perspective, if you will. So now we are more self-reliant than anything. I'm able to get things done a lot quicker and smoother. We're also able to identify discrepancies in real time and do what it takes to kind of minimize those discrepancies. Mm -hmm. So if I see that, you know, maybe an invoice has been duplicated or a donor's charge has been duplicated, I'm able to identify that and then do what is necessary to resolve it. Got it. Um, I mean, this is kind of along the same lines, but can you speak to the use of NetSuite for helping the organization become more efficient? Yeah. So I think what the biggest thing that it's done for our organization in terms of how it directly impacts our artists is now our entire management team is trained on using the platform. So what our what our program staff actually does is they are able to update family members at the annual individual meetings that they host with each artist. And they're able to say, this is how much money they've made from their art sales. Oh my gosh. So it's really a great way to kind of share that with family members who are able to see, you know, our artists receive monthly checks, but to add that up is one thing. And we're able to say, they've been able to make 5,000, $10,000 from their art sales. And to see the look on our the family members' faces is really great. And before, we weren't really able to do that because we had one person working within QuickBooks, trying to do multiple things, and maybe didn't have as much time to devote to doing this very simple report that now our program team can run. Wow. That's... I can only imagine when you come up to a family member and say your, you know, your son or your daughter or your sister or your cousin, whatever it may be, made ten thousand dollars this year. That's 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 amazing. Um, how has Netsuite helped Creativity Explored fuel its mission? So NetSuite has helped Creativity Explored fuel our mission through our artist payments, definitely. It's a very simple system where we're able to cut checks to our artists to make sure that they're paid for the sales that they've done or the commissions that they've been able to secure. It's also helped us kind of identify the programs that are working and are working well for our artists. So for instance, you know, we have what we're featuring here today is our licensing program, where we're able to partner with companies around the world to license original artwork to adorn their products. And what we're able to do is store that information in NetSuite, look at the reports on a monthly basis, at least, and kind of see the progress that a program is making and see the impact directly on the artists themselves. Mm. So we talk a lot about how NetSuite works with companies or organizations from a B2B perspective, right? But you have to have a lot of trust in an organization like NetSuite to take on all of these challenges that you've mentioned and to bring forth all of these new things you're able to do. You have to trust that organization. Um, why do you think Creativity Explored trust that with NetSuite? And like, what would you tell other nonprofit organizations who are maybe looking to, you know, 
make their processes better or find a financials tool that can help them, you know, moving forward? So we have so many people working within NetSuite at a given time, which is actually great Mm -hmm. because it means more eyes on line items, more eyes on your budget versus actual. And I think that just really empowers departments. It empowers the entire organization to be creative, be innovative, and try to think of other ways for us to either fundraise or to continue selling art. Mm -hmm. And NetSuite provides that for us. You know, we no longer have these kind of isolated systems that one person is working in. So our accounting team isn't just, you know, working directly with QuickBooks, but now they're kind of seeing how the donor management system comes into play, how Mm. the customers come into play. And they're able to see that all within real time, which I can't emphasize enough. So if you have multiple departments and multiple different sources of revenue, I definitely think NetSuite is worth looking into. What do you think like with having that and having everybody, you know, in the organization be able to see different areas and connect to different areas? Well, in real time, like you mentioned, um, what do you think that does for the organization as a whole? So I can definitely speak to my department. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) My department Definitely, I think probably benefits more than others Mm -hmm. because I'm able to see if a donor is impacted by certain other departments. So if they purchase artwork from, for instance, one of our artists and that artist happens to be featured in an upcoming show, I can run a quick report in NetSuite, email all of those donors and say, hi, I know you're following this artist or you're collecting his work. He has an opening coming up on Thursday. Please stop by. And I think that the personal connection there, that personal touch is definitely driving donations because people are recognizing that and witnessing how, you know, personalized we've made everything. Wow. Very cool. I also want to touch um, before we conclude here on the sweet pro bono side of things. Yes. How have you worked with NetSuite on that? Yes. So I was lucky enough to be a beneficiary of the sweet pro bono program last year. Uh And I worked with two powerful young women, Janine and Erin. Shout out to them. Shout out. (laughs) (laughs) And they helped customize our NetSuite system especially our CRM, and they helped customize it in a way for us to better track grant application deadlines, grant report deadlines, as well as where we are in the grant prospect process. And really through this, it's transformed our grant funding. We've been able to stay organized, stay up to date. And now I'm pleased to say that over the last two years, we've been able to grow our grant funding by over 300 percent because of it. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. Thank you. That's amazing. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we are here at Sweet Connect San Francisco. Um, Creativity Explored is actually showcased on the expo floor. Yes. What does that mean for you guys? Oh man, it's wonderful. I think I said this earlier about having a space to promote the work of our artists, but this is just a whole nother level. It's a lot of people who are immediately drawn to the artwork when they see it across the room and will come up and ask about it. And then when they find out the person has a disability who created the work, they're always blown away floored yes and so it just shows that the artwork really does stand out it really does speak to an entire community and group of people and it's not about their disability it's about what they're producing in our studio and how they are being creative and how are they how they're adding color and imagination to the entire world it's changing everybody else's perspective on these on these artists absolutely um you know just for to describe to our listeners who are tuning in right now there are skateboards with with Uh, paintings on the bottom of the skateboard. There are coffee mugs. There are plates. That's the one that I want. Okay, so there's this plate that that says moldy donuts. And I don't know why I saw it. I was like, I need this plate. I need the Anyway, so there are so many different forms that we're making. um, We're making little buttons here where people can take a 
per, a, a portion of one of these pieces of artwork and turn it into their own little button that they can wear on their clothes. Um, so I did that this morning. First thing this morning, it was awesome. It's just, it's really, really cool to see how many different ways. I mean, there's pillows, there's, there's actual artwork you can hang on walls. Yes. It's very, very cool. Yes. So, um, you know, to, to kind of wrap up here, I'm going to tell everybody who's listening in how they can get involved with Creativity Explored. But first of all, where is the organization headed in the future? So we are just really excited to keep adding to our programming and keeping our mind set on this artist-centered approach that we've implemented a few years ago and really kind of expanding as much as we can. We've started to partner with offsite studios where our artists can actually go to a studio in San Francisco that's offsite, that's outside of Creativity Explored, and actually create alongside member of the general members of the general arts community and this is kind of a great opportunity not only for our artists but other people with disabilities as well because what it's allowed us to do is it's allowed us for the first time in decades an opportunity to actually add to the number of artists who join our program so now that our artists are feeling more confident and comfortable in their art making they're now going to these off-site studios still with mentors and professional teachers from our staff there to guide them, but they're able to have this whole nother area where they're able to create often more detailed, more focused, and sometimes even larger because they have more space. And that also means that we can open our doors to even more people. There's over 9,000 people with disabilities in San Francisco. So having opportunities to think about ways where we can invite more of them into our space, I think is always something we're thinking about so this is definitely one of those very cool how can NetSuite help creativity explore to get there so NetSuite is such a great organization to work with I'm always amazed as to the staff and their ability to kind of jump in especially with nonprofits and help problem solve and customize the systems so again working with the sweet pro bono team has been very beneficial for us and we plan to do that more in the future in fact we're participating in the build-a-thon today so yeah. looking forward to more customizations later yeah what are they doing at the build-a-thon for you guys right now so they're actually doing something that is going to save our team and it an incredible amount of time. They're actually building custom reports. So now we can actually track the source of all of our donations. So whether it came in online through maybe a sale or maybe by check, all Facebook, everything, all of the sources that we see donations come through, all of those platforms, they are now building a custom report. So now whenever we log in, it will just pop up right there and we can see what's been successful, what hasn't. Yeah. So, you know, here, listeners at Sweet Connect, we do these build the thons um, and we choose, you know, one nonprofit and this time it's creativity explored. And so basically they are hacking into your system essentially yes. to figure out this customization. What, I mean, right now I'm looking, it's, it's actually behind us and I can see it from outside <laughs> of our studio. There's gotta be probably 20 to 25 people working on this right now. What's yeah. that like to see that? It's so great. And I mean, like I said earlier, working with the sweet pro bono team, it was the same dedication and the same attention to detail. It's, you know, whether it's two people or 20 people, the fact that they are just digging in and trying to solve problems for us and trying to make the platform even more user friendly for us that maybe aren't as tech savvy, <laughs> I think is definitely a huge benefit. And the fact that NetSuite even has this program, I think is wonderful. Amazing. Well, if people are not, you know, here today and if they're not in San Francisco, or if they are and they're just not here, how can they get involved with Creativity Explored? Yes, anytime anyone is in San Francisco, please stop by over in the Mission District in San Francisco. Otherwise, follow us on social media, sign up for our e-newsletter. You'll hear lots of inspiring stories, meet some of our artists through social media, through those newsletters. And if you're feeling ultra generous, there's always a chance to donate to our our programming and to support more artists with developmental disabilities as they try to create artwork in our community. 
Love it. Megan, thank you so much for coming on and just sharing the Creativity Explored story and how you guys have worked with NetSuite and just for being here in general. I I genuinely, I I want to go look to see if there's something I can purchase um, because I want some of this artwork, you guys. I'm telling you, you got to go check it out. Um, So we look forward to everything you have going on in the future and I'm sure we will talk to you soon. Yes, thank you. Such great stories and insight there from Creativity Explored's Megan Hover. We've provided a link to get involved with Creativity Explored in the description of this podcast episode. We hope you do. Thank you so much to Megan for joining us on this episode of the NetSuite podcast. We also want to thank our sponsors over at The Second City and Toad & Co., as well as our editors over at Lampstand. And as always, all you listeners for tuning in. You're the reason we're doing this. Talk to you next time. You just listened to the NetSuite podcast. Be sure to tune in every week with more NetSuite developments, stories, and insights into the benefits of one integrated system to help you run your business.